Hello everyone, welcome to a foreign infirmary in the Philippines. Well, I have felt terrible in the last uh, few days. I'm not feeling much better today, but sometimes you got stuff to do that you need to get done. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm gonna, <clears throat> the this is the tank that has the crayfish in it. And it's getting to be a little bit too much of Zola in this tank, in all the tanks really. So I'm going to be uh, taking a bunch of it out. Not just out of this tank, but uh, all of them. And I'm gonna be transferring it down into the uh, tilapia pond. It's just too much. The, if I don't have a blender, if I had a blender I would, uh, dry this azola and uh, pulverize it, powderize it, I guess you could say, uh, in the blender. But I don't. Um, the crayfish can't really get to this azola the way that it is. They're not uh, top feeders. They're bottom feeders and they're not going to swim up to get it. What they eat is stuff that's on the bottom. So the primary use of this azola that's in the crayfish tank here is for shading. And to keep the water temperature nice and cool. But azola being azola, it wants to uh, expand uh, and grow more than what I'm comfortable with. And we got up to like, I don't know, 70-80% coverage, surface area coverage in this tank, and that's just too much. When you get too much uh, surface coverage with Azola, it um, cuts down on the oxygen exchange in the water. And that's uh, not a good thing. Not so much the oxygen has changed. Maybe I misspoke there a little bit. It's the other gases, uh, primarily ammonia, that uh, escape the water. Uh, but the more that it's blocked, the less that that can occur. And so it's twofold. It keeps the oxygen from transferring and it, uh, it inhibits the transfer of gases out of the water. Someday, at some point, I will get that blender and uh, the, the theory behind uh, running it through a blender and pulverizing it is that it will once it's powderized a bit, is that it'll sink, and uh, they'll be able to utilize it. Another reason I wanted to clear out a bunch of that is so uh, I'm going to come out tonight and spy on them after it gets dark, and see how well or not well they're foraging at night, because that's when they're supposed to be doing it. And if I can't see the bottom. And I can't see what they're doing. I got quite a bit out of this, out of that tank. And I probably only got half of it. So uh, there's way too much in this, in the main tank here. This is the stuff the crayfish eat as it goes to the bottom. And I should probably show you that as well. I've also put some moss in it. I don't know how well it's going to come up. But that's it right there. Right in front of those uh, uh, tubes. Uh, Whitwit calls it Lamont. I just call it moss. They really like that. Uh, that's like their primary food source, uh, vegetable-wise, 
in the wild. The crayfish are, will just about eat anything and they'll thrive. Not only survive, but they'll thrive eating just about anything. This is all that is so thick in this tank here, it's pretty easy to get it out. This is working really well as a biofilter in conjunction with the Kang Kong. It's working really well. As you can see, you can, you can see down to the bottom of the tank really easy. And I haven't filtered this water at all. Uh, just the biofilter. Just the, the roots from these plants that are growing in it. And I think that's the best way to do it anyway. So I'm going to try to make this my daily routine. Part of my daily routine is fishing the Azola out and transferring it down into the pond as a food source as well for the tilapia that are still in there. And you know tilapia. There's more and more tilapia in there every day. I was going to check for pregnancies today, but I'm just, uh, I'm just not up to it. I was up half the night, and I just, uh, you can see how thick this stuff is in there. Just basically out of this little corner, I finished filling up that this here bucket. So I'm going to go transfer this. I'm going to get a little bit of the Kang Kong off the top and just put it on the top of that bucket. And we're going to go throw it in this lappy pond. All right, well there it is. Not a whole lot, but. I put that much in every day it'll I'll soon have the Azola back in this pond the way that I like it you can see that they're hitting it pretty good the small fish really love it the three inch and below they're feasting and the King Kong down at that other end they've eaten it at as much as it was in here, they've eaten it down to almost nothing, so need to do a little King Kong replenishment as well. Looking good. Thank you. I wanted to show you while I'm here, close by, Tatai mowed all this this morning, and uh, I haven't discussed it with anyone. Kind of my plan is to put squash in here. I don't know if anyone else has any better ideas, but this is a fairly large area here, and it for the most part is not being utilized. So, why not? I don't know what else we would put in here that would not require irrigation because the squash does not this time of the year. So I think I'm going to wait a couple days and then I'm going to burn this and we'll put all this little area here in the squash. He went to get gas. I think he's uh, getting ready to do the other half of field six. <sighs> Hopefully I can get over this bug that I've got and get to working again. Because I need to, 
I need to prep not only this area, but field six as well for bananas and squash. I don't know how much, uh, we could probably put a few more bananas in here, I guess, but I don't know. That coffee tree has not only survived, but it's thriving. That's probably an eight foot tree now. That one over there is doing really good. I'm going to end this one up. I'm going to go lay down before I fall down. Thank you, everyone. Please like, comment, share, and join.